Hi, I'm Jason Ponton. I'm the editor-in-chief and the publisher of Technology Review. And I'm here at Andy Plesser's Beat Retreat to say a few words about, about the state of digital media. So we're all friends, we're colleagues, we're peers. And I thought I might take the opportunity to speak candidly to you about what we know and what we don't know in March of 2000. And 12. It has been a difficult decade, I think. I used to be the editor of Red Herring magazine. In the first six months of 2000, we earned more than a hundred million dollars in advertising. And two years later, we were gone. We were bankrupt. We had spent every penny of our venture capitalist money, and we were out of business. Our story was by no means unique. 50% of people who were journalists in 2000 are no longer journalists. That's an extraordinary figure. And that's because of a fundamental economic law that we all know, which is that the internet taught audiences that they could read editorial content for free, uh, and it provided advertisers with a more efficient way to advertise. But I think in March of March of 2012, 10 years after Red Herring closed, we have some reason for cautious optimism. Cautious optimism about how we can create a sustainable media economy for this century, which supports quality editorial and provides that essential function of the, of the fifth estate. So I'm going to run through the things that we know, do know, and then I'm going to touch upon a few things that we don't know that I hope we'll be discussing over the next two days, and that smart people in this audience can help us solve. So here are the things that we know. So print, which if you had asked me a, de a decade ago, would it still be around? I would have bet it wouldn't be. Print is still a good business. It's not a great business, but it's still a business because it offers both readers and advertisers a thing they cannot otherwise get. Audiences get this elegantly uh, curated form factor, and it's delivered to them and it's a reminder that they should read it. Advertisers like it as well because it has a specificity about the audience that we are still struggling to provide in some ways in digital formats. Here's something else we know. With few exceptions, the web is irreducibly linky by which I mean that paywalls don't work. Now, there are a couple of uh, organizations that have successfully put up paywalls. The Wall Street Journal, The Economist has a, a partial paywall, Consumer Reports. What they all seem to have in common is a few features. The information they have is genuinely unique. There's nothing else like it out there. It really is proprietary. The information is smart. That's another condition for an effective paywall. And at some level, it helps the audience make a transactional decision. And finally, it has to be well designed. But if you can't do those four things, I don't think you can maintain a paywall. Everything else demands to be linky because the web is an interconnection of people having a conversation. It's much more a community than any other medium we've had in the past. Here's something else we know, I think. Tablets, which many people in the media industry had had a feckless infatuation with, uh, the belief that it would somehow resurrect the business models of the last 300 years of media, have proven to be a disappointment if you thought you could simply go and pull the old print model out onto these, these new devices. Um, and in fact, at least in the media world, it seems that if tablets do succeed, they're not going to succeed as little magazines. You know, these closed walled garden apps that we started to create at vast expense within the, the iOS APIs or the Android APIs haven't really succeeded. And it's fairly clear, at least to the developers I talked to, that if tablets do succeed, they're going to be based upon an open set of standards, HTML5, and are going to be fairly fairly linky as well. Um, what else do we know? We know that readers actually will buy, read long pieces a little bit. But by and large, they spend much less time inside individual brands than they did inside traditional media. 
they want to roam around reading things. In fact, the average reader spends less than five minutes a day, even on their most favored, favored brands. Um, we have learned that community is vitally important, that um, it is much more of a conversation, and that the group we used to call the audience are not passive consumers of our editorial. And finally, and I know that Vivian's going to talk with us, we have learned that brand is tremendously important, that brand didn't cease to be significant uh, in the era of the internet. So, what do we know on the advertising side? Well, we know a lot of stuff on the media side as well. Um, we know that if you like undifferentiated mass reach, television is still the name of the game. Television is still the most delicious advertising medium in the world if you want large reach. But if you want super efficient advertising, the best form of advertising remains keyword advertising. And increasingly, these elegantly socially and geolocated demographics that social networks like Facebook and Twitter, Pinterest are, are beginning to, to offer. And that's why, that's why Google AdWords and AdSense are at the moment the largest advertising networks on the face of the planet. And I don't think that's going to change. Print, as I said, actually turns out to be a nice little advertising platform for many advertisers. But print publishers are such sad saps at the moment. We're such desperate individuals that you can discount the, the heck out of us and we'll, we'll accept it. In my own publication of Technology Review, our print advertising, which had been the very foundation of our business for 112 years, now constitutes only a third of our overall ad revenues. So print is still there, and we can still get money from it, but it's not what it once was. As for the web itself, there is a kind of economic law at work at the moment uh, in web advertising. And that is that CMPs are a cheap commodity, and they're getting cheaper. And that's because almost none of us sell out all our inventory. And that failure to sell out our, all our inventory, even in our most desirable channels, means that with the combination of ad networks, there is this downward pressure upon prices that we still have to fix. In essence, that means that on the web, a, what had been a dollar of print advertising is still not in any way equal by the, that dime of online advertising, even as our online audience has grown. It's just getting worse. So let me talk about what we, what we don't know and what I hope we're going to work on over the next two days. So we still don't know in any detail, I believe, the, the business models that will sustain us in the future. We have some ideas, though. We have a few ideas. And here are the two things that I would like the folks in the room to work with me and other people who care about, about media to, to discover. We don't know nearly enough about our online audiences. We simply don't. We don't know as much as we used to do, paradoxically, about our, our print audiences. Now, the old panel-based methods that have worked very well in television were obviously insufficient. And companies like Comscore and Nielsen Interactive and Quantcast have done their best to add to the old panel-based systems uh, server-based, technological, census-based uh, measurements that can give a more detailed and, uh, and granular view. But we need to know more. We need to know what people are doing when they see advertising, how they react to it, how they feel about it. And the final thing which I think we don't know is we don't know what the future advertising formats are going to look like. No matter how clever banner advertising gets or uh, pre-roll advertising gets in video, at some level, we're still trying to replicate in media the advertising formats that sustain us for so long uh, on, in print. And I think we need an entirely new form of advertising. It's an old, uh, old adage that everyone likes the advertising that they like, right? And if somehow we could know more about what people delighted, what they did when they saw advertising, and began to create ads that were actually useful to them, in the way that keyword advertising is, in the way that social network advertising is within media, then I think we might be able to go and see a future profitable media business that will help folks like me do the kind of editorial 
that delights us so much.